Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. This is Sportsman News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a preview to the Philadelphia Phillies versus St. Louis Cardinals series, and also a quick reaction Philly versus Mets series. If you can't see behind me, that bulb is actually a red bulb on one of these uh, Vibe uh, lights. You can buy them at the dollar store. They're pretty cool um, that you can have in the background of videos that are pretty dope. But um, we're getting into the series now. Chase Anderson in the first game of the Mets series to recap that series quickly. Won four innings, gave up two, three baseballs, three hits. Um, four innings, of course, in a seventh inning game is different than the equivalent of a nine inning game. Um, <clears throat> that would be almost like actually pitching through the fifth inning, but you would have liked to see him actually go to the fifth inning in that first start, but he, he kept us in the game. That was a game that the Phillies were able to take the lead in extra innings, and the Nearest uh, ended up blowing in that game in that tilt, so that was unfortunately a game uh, Nearest's first bad pitch uh game of the uh, season, which is going to happen, and uh, that's what happened. Then they got spanked um, in the second game of the doubleheader, uh, losing 4 to nothing. even though Aaron Nola uh, actually was able to pitch through 5. He gave up 3, had 7 strikeouts, 1 walk, um, as he even said after he would like to be better, but he was fine and, and good enough in that start. If the offense could just show up, the road woes from last year continue into this year. Uh, the Phillies just can't figure it out on the road, and they can't figure out their offense one iota this season. Their pitching's been doing better. If you only give a four, you sh one, you shouldn't get shut out in general. But two, two um, if you only give a four, that should be a game you're still able to be in, especially with an offense that was top five in the league last year. Uh, this year, they're down in the bottom five of the league, so they really got to get that going, especially when it comes to the road. Um, the road woes for the Phillies have been big. And then in the final game of the series, as we go through this quickly, our Phillies unfortunately lost 5-1 to one since the final game was actually supposed to be the second to last game before yesterday's got postponed. But our final game was a game that Zach Wheeler pitched uh, six and a third innings. Uh, gave up ten hits, so obviously you would like to bring that number down, but only gave up three runs, uh, six strikeouts. And then you had Jojo Romero come in and really struggle in that one to kind of put it away at that point for the uh, Metropolitans to be able to just kind of pull ahead of that one. And the Phillies didn't have much of a chance to come back there. So that was a short recap of the Phillies and Mets series. Get your head's out of your rear end on the road, really. The Phillies' road roads continue from last year now into this year, um, and it continued in that Mets series as they got um, spanked in two out of three games and then lost because of Hector Neris in the first game of that series. They're struggling in his first game. But if you enjoyed what you heard from the Phillies' Mets series, again, please like, comment, and subscribe. We're trying to get the subscribers up as quickly as possible for Sports Fan News here and Steel Flyers as well. So please go over to Steel Flyers and subscribe there as well. Now let's get into the Phillies and St. Louis Cardinals that my buddy and I are going to be going to the game tonight as we preview this series. Tonight's ball game is going to be Zach Eflin um, actually got help the Phillies by having a delay there to be able to kind of push the starters more. Where I believe tomorrow is supposed to be Matt Moore. It says TBD, but I thought I saw a tweet um, yet last night that said it was Matt Moore. But um, we'll get into it if it's Moore or if it's Anderson. Um, I believe it would be more though, than that pitching matchup we'll get into next if it is that case. But this first one for Friday at 7.05 this evening is Carlos Martinez, who's struggling to get his mojo back as a starter after having injury issues. Um, has 5Ks of 6.30 ERA to Eflin, who's looked good with 10Ks of 3.46 uh, ERA. I would definitely say this uh, matchup favors our Philadelphia Phillies. Um, when it comes to the pitching matchup, and when, when it comes to hitting, the only lineup right now in the Central that actually has been doing um, pretty, um, I guess the word is efficient that I'm looking for, would be really the Brewers somewhat, where all the other teams out there, and Cincinnati, Milwaukee and Cincinnati, I should say, Cincinnati's often scoring like over nine runs a game for a ridiculous amount of clips, so Milwaukee and Cincinnati. St. Louis has been 6-6, six and six, mostly because of the same struggles of the Phillies. Their offense has been sputtering some. If you look at guys you expect to hit on St. Louis, Goldie's only hitting 234 right now. Arenado and Molina are doing their thing at 319 and 342, but then Dylan Carlson, top prospect, 243. Uh, Paul DeYoung, very good shortstop, 128. Edmonds at 291, he's bringing that up now. But they're not, Carpenter's doing terrible below 100, so they're not hitting as well as they hope. Is this going to be an interesting series of seeing who hits better since there really is for each of these teams. You got JT hitting for the Phillies, um, plus um, <clears throat> you got Didi Gregorius hitting 310, and Gene um, at, let's see here, 0 .2, 0 .295, so 295 
Um, so those guys are hitting, but it's only a select few from each team. So it's going to be interesting to see in this uh, series against the Cardinals whose offense actually gets pushing and gets going because both of these teams have been very limited and probably would have won more games and actually be above 500 rather than both clubs coming in at an even 6-6 six and six if their offenses were actually able to help them out a bit where the Phillies can't have that happen in this series, and we would like to see it continue to obviously happen for the Cardinals, and I think there's a good chance that their offense will continue to sputter with Zach Eflin on the mound, where hopefully the Phillies, like um, we've seen them do in past Aprils at home, can kind of have a good home April and continue to have that success. They did have it at the beginning of the season, albeit with no offense, really. Now it would be nice to be able to have that success with Zach Eflin pitching and actually be able to score at least four or five runs or something uh, for him in tonight's game. But going up against Martinez, that should give you a good chance. I would favor the Phillies in this one, especially because they're home. Again, their home and road splits are ridiculous. Um, the last couple of years, they've been pitiful on the road, but home, I would definitely favor them for that. Um, in the second game, it looks like it's going to be uh, Kwon Hung Kim um, from... Korea, who has a career 1-6-2 in eight games. He's a pretty good starting pitcher against Moore. Uh, two lefties that are obviously not going to blow blow anything past you and be all locale, at location, and all um, movement on their pitches. I would definitely favor uh, Kim for that game over Moore just from how Moore's looked. Um, so this is a series, I think, the Phillies have to win this first game with Eflin. Then they got Nola going against John Gant on Sunday, and that's how they're going to win this series. Because the second game's a wild card game. You got Kim pitching in his first game of the season, and you got Moore, who hasn't looked as good yet, and Kim is honestly probably, at this point, a better pitcher than him. So I would favor um, them for that matchup and say the Cardinals probably have the favor to win game two. When it comes to game three at 105 on Sunday, this is the game I really want to see at home. Uh, afternoon starts, we've seen Noah dominate before. Uh, this is really the game I want to see him go all in and have a great start. He already has 18 Ks of three, four, five. So it's not like he's doing bad. He's just not doing Aaron Noah stuff. And Gant has 8 Ks um, with a three ERA. So he's starting um, his season as good as well. But you definitely have the pitching advantage in this one. You got your ace on the mound. You have a guy that when he's at his best is one of the better guys, top 15 somewhere in there, uh, wherever you want to rank him, um, to watch in the league. So you definitely have the pitching advantage there when it comes to the Phillies. I think the Phillies, if they can really come out and get their offense going at all, even to the capacity of four runs in these games, they should be able to win two out of three because you got the advantage with Eflin. So if Eflin can pitch like he has this far and you could score four or five runs, you should be able to win. The same goes with Aaron Nola. The only wild card game there is the one right smack in the middle, which is Matt Moore apparently from a tweet. If not, then it's somebody against Kim tomorrow, which I would favor Kim from his career numbers. It is his first start this year, so that's why that's still a wild card one. But I'll be heading over to the game. I'm sure maybe I'll see some of you uh, down there. Can't really talk to you, though, with the COVID protocols, but... <laughs> Maybe we'll see some people. But this has been a uh, Cardinals at Philadelphia Phillies series preview. I hope you all enjoyed it. For Sports Fan News, I'm Joe Borg, a.k.a. Projo. Please click that like button below and subscribe button, trying to get the viewership and subscribers up. And also, enjoy the ball game and enjoy all the other great baseball you like watching around the league. Stay safe this weekend, everybody. Peace out.